first off, friends, and welcome to this video today, where today we're going to be unboxing the Ares Amoeba Striker Kneecapper. Before we get into unboxing this little sniper rifle, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my channel patrons who support the channel month after month. You are all amazing, so a big thank you to each and every one of you. And if you're watching this channel and you're not subscribed yet, then hit that big old subscribe button so you won't miss any future videos. Now, on to the kneecapper. Ares have quite a few sniper rifles in their striker lineup. They've got little ones without stocks, which are kind of more like pirate pistols, I would say. And then you've got the more like sniper rifle proper type ones, which are really long. And this is somewhere that's kind of like in the middle. Now, the reason why I've got this on my table here is I've got a friend of mine who's looking to get into airsoft with his son, and his son is quite young. And when he had a go of my SSG-10, he found the front heaviness of it a little bit too much, and it wasn't really usable. So when he asked me to buy one for him, I was thinking, what would be a good sniper rifle for that? And I came to the solution of the Aerie Striker kneecapper because it's quite short, easier for him to hold and also easier for him to cock because the travel distance is a lot shorter than that of a VSR. Anyway, let's just get into the box. It's got a loading indicator so that means it will show you when it's cocked so I'm looking forward to seeing that because sometimes I forget if I've cocked or not cocked my sniper rifle and it can cause me to miss shots. Direct feed system which just looks like it's feeding into the hop unit so I'm not really too sure what's different there. A shoulder rest which would be quite handy when you're prone and a renovated trigger system with a 90 degree sear and lever that's good the fact that it comes with a 90 degree sear already in there is very good because that means you can have more powerful springs inside the sniper rifle and if any of you have upgraded a vsi you'll know that 90 degree like sears are a very important aspect all right let's see what the inside of this looks like so it's not like an iPhone opening when you've got like the phone just like sat right on the top here. But we can already see that we have got a few accessories and whatnot in the box. So we've got an unjamming rod. We have got two magazines of which the capacity for me at the minute is unknown. So we'll have a little look at those later on and see how many BBs we can get in these mags. We have got an old school style speed loader. Now the vast majority of us these days would be familiar with like the plungy top ones. Well, essentially this is an old school speed loader where you would take your magazine, put your speed loader in there just like so. And then you fill this tube with BBs and then once you're ready to go you take this stick and then you push all the BBs into the magazine in one go. I must say I'm happy that I've grown up in an age where the plungy magazine loaders exist because trying to fill this tube with BBs up all the time would be an absolute nightmare. Because this is the kneecapper we also have a suppressor here as well and finally we have got the rifle itself. Nice and neatly covered in plastic and also looks like there's a big block of foam on the uh, charging handle so that's a nice little touch. That is everything out the box and there we have it. And I must say it's actually a bit shorter than I was expecting it to be like it does look quite short in all of the advertising materials but here just in person it does feel like a lot shorter still I imagine the barrel is really really tiny I'll have to get my tape measure out so we can just see roughly how long the barrel is but with the hop unit being here and the end of the barrel there I'm saying it can't be longer than like 120 mil 130 mil maybe let's have a little look at the famous short bolt pull of the striker series oh <laughs> That's it. That's literally it. Look at that. That is the bolt pull on the striker. And now let's compare that to a VSR. Oh, look at that. It is a lot longer than the uh, than the striker bolt pull, that's for sure. Before we get into the next cheeky feature of the striker kneecapper, have you subscribed yet? If not, press the subscribe button now and also hit the like button too. I really appreciate it. Right, let's see what this sounds like. I don't know if there's any BBs in there, so let's me shoot it somewhere safe. I have my handy dandy little chrono test safe shooting device, and we are going to chrono this shortly too. There's no BB in there, and that actually sounded really snappy. Considering how short of a bolt pull that is, that was actually... Really, really snappy. Oh, wait, is that? There we go. Oh, it's got quite a bit of a kick to it, to be fair. I am curious to uh, to see what the uh, the FPS is of this like out of the box. So we are going to have a little test of that shortly too. You can see here as well, it actually has got a TDC hop unit. So you don't have to like kind of get in there with anything rotary. You've literally just used your Allen key to adjust your hop on the flight. I like that. TDCs, mwah, they're beautiful things. And that is a nice little touch, which I didn't actually know about. Then coming over to this side here, we can see this is our cocking alert kind of thing. Well, so when I cock it here, you see that little red bit pops out just like so. And when I put it back in, still there, take the shot. Now that's back inside there, just like that. When I'm looking down here, it is really to see. It's nice and narrow, so it's not gonna get caught on anything, but it is very clear to see that this is now in its cocking mode. Does this have a safety at all? Because one of the things I find with VSRs is the safety lever is here, and it's so easy to like catch it. So whenever I get a rifle, I always remove the safety straight away, because you just don't really need it, to be honest with you. If it's not cocked, it's safe. And here it actually looks like there would be a safety, but it's actually 
just been blanked off. There's like a little bit of plastic in there blanking it off. Looking at the externals now of the rifle, we have got a couple of stickers here which we can easily remove, so that's fine. I really like this OD green. This is the OD green one, by the way. And the OD green does look really, really nice on it. Same thing on the other side. This side looks so much cleaner and a lot nicer, in my personal opinion. I'm not too much of a fan of the rifles that have like safety and warnings and things actually inscribed into the plastic. You can actually see the, the warning read owner's manual before use is like formed into the plastic. And that's something which I'm not a big fan of because this is like a, a warning which you should see the first time you own the rifle. And it's only really something that benefits you for, you know, the first 20 minutes. Like if you're a new player, if you're an experienced player, you don't really care about any of that anyway. So having it actually permanently on the gun, it's not something which I'm a big fan of. It does look like that this front bit here is a little bit modular. You've got a couple of screws here holding on that lower M lock. So it may be that you could remove that and put some other accessories on there potentially. I do like the fact that you've got a little QD swivel at the front there. Coming underneath, actually there's a clip here on the grip. Is that removable? It is removable and there's Allen keys inside. That is actually a really cool little addition there. My attention is drawn to the magwell and the magazines, which don't say on here how many BBs they have per mag. Let me see if there's a manual. Magazine capacity, 45 rounds. That's pretty cool. So now I think it's time to do some chronoing with this. So I have got some Stay Fresh Shoe Bio 0.43 gram BBs and you can get these from Project Airsoft. While I'm filling up this fancy old school speed loader, it's probably worth telling you as well that this does come in three different colors, darker, black, and urban gray. That is literally the first time I've loaded a magazine using the old school style of speed loader. <laughs> Oh yeah, I haven't looked at the suppressor yet. So let's quickly open this up and have a little look. Nicely wrapped in bubble wrap, so it's not gonna get scratched or damaged before you get to have a little bit of a play with it. And it's got no foam inside it, but it has got a thread near the end, which is interesting. Oh wait, I'm looking at it from the end. <laughs> I thought that was the end and that it was gonna be like a 14 mil uh, counterclockwise thread. But luckily it does say on the back here, front, and it also says off and on. It is a massive thread as well. But what does it sound now it's got this on? Is it gonna be a suppressor? Or is it more gonna be like an amplifier? Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. Seeing the other side of it, it would probably be a bit more of a better representation. But let's see what it's like with this. This here. I think it does like dull the sound. It makes it sound different, so it does give it a bit of a to it. It does definitely reduce most of the kick, I would say, from the sound. I think if this had foam inside it, you would be onto a winner. So maybe get some like scotch bright pads and that's gonna really help dull down the sound. Right, time to chrono it. So I'm gonna take the suppressor off. I'm gonna put the magazine in with the 4.3 BBs and we're gonna see what this comes up to on the chrono. Mag goes in nice and easily. And it is actually quite a nice profile with the magazine in there as well like that. I think this actually, it looks better in person. I've always been a little bit kind of not a fan of the Striker series of, uh, of rifles, but now I've got it, it actually feels a bit more like an old school English World War II rifle. Like, it feels like a mixture between a kind of like trench sweeper and a Lee Enfield. Is that just me? Am I just being weird? Now that I've got it in my possession, I actually feel like I quite like it. <laughs> I never thought I was gonna say that, but I actually feel like I, I do quite like it. Anyway, let's chrono this quickly and see what we come to. Usually if you're chronoing something and you're shooting airsoft guns, please do wear eye protection. With this little device here, I have never, ever, ever had a BB come back out of here. I've got my chrono here with a long tube so the BBs can slow down and then they end up in this bottle here. So it is completely safe, but you know, if you are shooting airsoft guns, please do be careful, look after your eyes, okay? And now we're gonna do some shots. First one is 1.28 joules, 1.24 joules, 1.24 joules, 1.21 joules. So that is now the end of those. We have got one BB, two, three, and four. So when you're changing magazines out of this, you've got four BBs at the end, which you're not gonna be able to use. It was mostly consistent. I think that there's this one here. We probably have a little bit of worrying to do with the hot rubber. What I would recommend is if you are gonna get one of the strikers, put a couple of magazines through it before you take it out to the field. So fill up all the magazines that come with it quite nicely. It does come with two 45 round magazines. You can also get 55 round magazines too. So if you wanna have more BBs on the field, those would be a good option for you. Now the FP 
FPS was a little bit lower than I was expecting it to be. It is a sniper rifle and you can go up to what, 2.32 joules. So at the minute, we're kind of like halfway with that, but because the short pull that you have, also the length of the barrel, you haven't got a lot of time in order for all of that pressure that you're making to be exerted onto the BB. So if you are gonna get the kneecapper, it could be a good idea for you to get an extended inner barrel and actually put the suppressor on it and have the inner barrel go all the way up to there. And that's gonna raise the stock FPS on this as well. So yeah, that would be one of my top shoe recommendations. Hmm. It also has got, like we've just said before, this little shoulder rest. And I've not actually used a shoulder rest before on a rifle and it actually kind of feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It actually does feel kind of nice. I'm not too sure how I would feel about it in the field because I like to move my guns around quite a lot and decide to like run and things like that. And I think initially it's probably going to find that this would kind of get in the way. It does feel surprisingly extra comfy. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe in the field I won't like it as much, but here anyway, it does feel quite nice. And that's it for the unboxing of the Ares Amoeba Striker Kneecapper. Now, if you haven't subscribed, hit that big old subscribe button so you can enjoy more content coming up and I'll see you in the next one.